Good Thank luck. you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for, for coming. Uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is Edward Rosert. Um, I work for ECMWF, uh, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. And uh, today I have the pleasure to present to you one of our software, which is called Skinny WMS. So first, a few words on uh, who we are. ECMWF is an intergovernmental organization. Uh, currently, we are comprised of 23 member states and 12 cooperating states. Uh, we provide not only uh, real-time operational uh, weather prediction service uh, to our members, but also we are a research institution, so we continuously impro uh, improve the numerical weather prediction, but also provide uh, climate reanalysis uh, data. And we currently operate two EU Copernicus services. Uh, one of them is the Copernicus Climate Change Service and the Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Service. And uh, on top of that, uh, we have a long history and experience in uh, providing software to process meteorological data and also visualize it. And uh, one piece of software that uh, I'm presenting today uh, is called Skinny WMS. So um, as you can already see, I hope my animation works. Yeah, it seems to work. So uh, Skinny WMS uh, is a meteorological web map service. So um, it is an open source uh, tool that allows you to visualize meteorological data interactively. But uh, before I go uh, deeper in, into what kind of features Skinny WMS has, uh, first a few words on the challenges in meteorological data visualization. So uh, the two most common types of, of meteorological data are uh, rasterized uh, data and, and point data. Uh, rasterized data, usually you get it in the form of numerical weather forecast uh, data. So um, this is quite common. Point data usually is uh, station data. So it's uh, individual observations um, of uh, stations all around the globe, but also um, it can be simulated station data uh, uh, as a kind of uh, prediction of future values. Um, this data us usually is very diverse. So, so we have um, um, a plethora of meteorological parameters with uh, different uh, units. Um, it's not necessarily the case that the same meteorological parameter has the same unit uh, or is provided with the same, same uh, units um, depending on who is producing the data. Also, sometimes some, some data is uh, summed up over time, so you need to understand how actually these, these values uh, came to be. Uh, we have categorical uh, values, which uh, a good example is um, the present weather uh, parameter, which basically, for example, can show you with a numerical whether, you, whether uh, thunderstorms are present and, and things like that. Um, usually, when we talk about meteorological data, it is uh, time-dependent data that um, can have multiple spatial dimensions. And uh, depending on who is producing the data, we are dealing with uh, a lot of spatial um, uh, coordinate systems that the data is provided with. Um, also, some of the challenges are numerical weather prediction data, as I said, is, is usually coverage data. So, so uh, you get basically a raster all, all over the world. And um, this might pose challenges, for example, when you want to visualize wind. So you have wind arrows um, that if you present them on a map, they should ideally not overlap. So, so data thinning is, is also an issue. And of course, if you have uh, multi-layered data, uh, transparency and, and things like that become an issue. So, so this is already uh, quite a lot. <laughs> but um, uh, traditionally, meteorological data was used, uh, of course, for meteorological experts or for forecasters. So uh, over the time, different uh, specialized, let's say, expert visualizations were created. For example, a good example are wind barbs. So these are not simply wind arrows, but uh, also show the wind speed encoded in, uh, in a certain manner. And this might be uh, really challenging to actually uh, visualize. 
And um, yeah, as I said, time series data means uh, that uh, we, we can actually produce time series plots, vertical profiles. If some of you are pilots, uh, then they might be familiar with vertical profiles of wind, where you see different wind speeds uh, and wind direction in different altitudes. So as if this uh, wasn't enough, <laughs> um, uh, two very common uh, um, formats to provide meteorological data are GRIP and NetCDF, which uh, also can be quite challenging to decode. GRIP is a standard managed by the WHO, uh, WMO, so it's a WMO standard uh, which is commonly used for numerical weather prediction data. It gives you a very compact binary representation, but uh, depending on who is producing the data, it can be challenging to decode because it requires additional tables. So, um, so these are some of the challenges. With NetCDF, HDF5, you, you have a wide variety of, of tooling available, so this is, uh, this is already um, quite nice but at the same time, you're less standardized in terms of parameter names and, and units that, uh, that are used in these uh, data sets. Um, some of it is mitigated if NetCDF um, data follows the CF metadata conventions, but all in all, uh, can also be quite challenging to actually understand the data. Luckily, ECMWF provides uh, some nice software tools, for example, EC codes or CF grip uh, driver for X-Array, which makes it uh, already much easier to ingest uh, this kind of data. So uh, now that you've heard some of the challenges with meteorological data, let's get back to Skinny WMS. As I already said, um, it provides an interactive um, visualization of the meteorological data, and um, we, it is uh, already packaged uh, to include uh, a nice little map viewer, so you can browse the data, uh, the only thing you have to do is uh, point Skinny WMS to, to the actual data. And uh, in terms of uh, technology, Skinny WMS heavily uh, relies on um, our open source software that I already mentioned, EC Codes. So this is used for, um, for reading uh, GRIP and NetCDF files. And then an additional uh, software, Magix, um, which is uh, used to actually generate the tiles uh, that are necessary for uh, a web map service. We have a Python interface on top um, that we use. So Skinny WMS itself is written completely in Python and um, then uses a Flask to actually deliver the WMS API. And uh, we use UWSGI to host the application. Um, Skinny WMS uh, is available, so the project home is on GitHub, and uh, you can easily install it by uh, running pip install to try it out. So now back to the features that Skinny WMS offers. So as I said, our aim was to provide um, meteorological data visualization out of the box um, ideally, it should be interactive because usually when you have time-dependent data, you would like to browse through, through different time steps. Uh, if you have different, different elevations, you would like to browse through elevations. Um, and how Skinny does that is, is basically reading the metadata of the data and then um, with the help of, of Magix, actually selecting suitable visualizations and, and uh, listing up available styles uh, to create um, already nice visualizations for the users. Um, additionally, it automatically converts units where necessary. For example, one very common conversion is um, Kelvin to Celsius. Um, usually, people are not very uh, familiar if you display a temperature like 280 degrees. Um, so this is already built in. And uh, we have multidimensional fields so, um, so you, you see uh, um, time dimension and elevation dimension also in the get capabilities document, which allows you then to select a specific, um, specific data. Um, we provide uh, a dynamic legend graphics, which are of course very useful for, for visualizations. So you can select um, an appropriate size for your legend and then 
uh, Magix and Skinny WMS together try to uh, create uh, the, a, a suitable legend graphic for these dimensions. And as I said, we have uh, an interactive map viewer. So once you fire up Skinny WMS, point it to the data, you can open your browser and then view the data. Um, Skinny WMS supports GRIP and NetCDF, and very recently, during uh, one of our uh, Vismet hack hackathons uh, this year in June, um, we tried to add support for server-side uh, GeoJSON. Um, GeoJSON specifically for point data, station data, with meteorological parameters. Um, it is um, so far not very well standardized how to actually map let's say time-dependent data in GeoJSON. So um, that's, that's why the support is still uh, experimental, but we are working hard on, on making something nice for the meteorological community. And although Skinny WMS is still quite young, um, it is already operationally used. Um, for example, two, prom uh, two prominent examples are the Copernicus Climate Data Store, which is available online, and also GeoPortal of um, the German Meteorological Service, where Skinny WMS is used as a data preview for their open data. Um, when it comes uh, to features, since Skinny WMS is still quite a young software, we are constantly adding new features, improving <coughs> Uh, existing ones, for example, one thing um, that we plan to implement would be get feature info uh, requests, um, which are part of the OGC standard for a web map service. And uh, this would allow us, for example, to then click on a an, on an point on the map and then uh, get, uh, depending on wh which kind of data we are visualizing, for example, getting time series plots or vertical profile plots um, at this uh, point, which would be kind of nice. And um, of course, improving the map viewer. So far, it, it is a bit limited, so it allows you to browse uh, through, through different times and, and layers, but, but um, um, the usability can, can always be improved. And the NetCDF support, since NetCDF is, a, is less standardized um, in terms of meteorological data, uh, we would like to improve uh, the detection um, of, of parameters in units and, and uh, the out-of-box visualization for data in NetCDF. And um, I mentioned already that we added GeoJSON format, which is still experimental, so we would like uh, to better document uh, what kind of format is, is required. Um, and DWD uh, provides uh, already a GeoJSON converter, which um, um, generates data that is, uh, can be ingested by Skinny WMS uh, to, visualize, um, to visualize points on the map. And um, this GeoJSON, just to add a few words, um, the problem is usually if you have time-dependent data and you have global coverage of the data, it can become quite large. So um, if you try, GeoJSON is usually very simple to visualize on a map, but um, when you suddenly have se uh, several hundred megabytes of data, this can be quite heavy on the client. So um, you don't, especially if you have um, mobile devices, um, this is not really a solution. So having server-side uh, GeoJSON support can, to some degree, mitigate that because you're only um, transferring the data um, that, that needs to be displayed. But also, um, some complicated visualizations, for example, station plots that you see in the lower right corner, are uh, quite challenging, actually, to, to create if you're using something like JavaScript. So, um, so this was one of the or several reasons, basically, why we tried to add GeoJSON. So as I already mentioned, Skinny WMS is available on GitHub together with all our other open source uh, software. So uh, feel free uh, to check it out. Um, also, Skinny uh, 
WMS uh, can visualize our open data, so we make more and more data available online. So also make sure to have a look, and of course, bug reports uh, or feature requests or code contributions are very welcome. So feel free to take a look on GitHub. And since I'm the first, uh, <laughs> one of the first presenting uh, today, um, there are some nice upcoming uh, talks by my colleagues. Milana's talk, talk about uh, our open data and can, it can be processed and visualized. James and Eddie's talk uh, about the Copernicus Climate Data Store, which I already mentioned. Dimitas and Paolo talk about uh, the flood awareness uh, service, a very nice application. And Shihan's talk about the data. So we, we have uh, troves of valuable and very nice uh, data and applications. So please uh, also take a look at uh, the talks of my colleagues. And with this, um, thank you for your attention. And I'm open for questions and comments.